You are not alone. Brought to you by Lifeline for Youth. Well, drug use for teens is down, but mental health issues are going up. I want to bring in Shane Peterson. He is the CEO of Lifeline for Youth. Hi, Shane. Good to see you again. Good to see you. So, Shane, I mean, this is, you know, the pandemic, it has just sent everybody of all ages into a tailspin, especially our teens, though, too. They're struggling with it in so many ways. And, yeah, the drug use went down. They weren't around their friends. But now look at the mental health issues, right? Yeah, yeah. I think the, the new survey from the state is out, you know, surveying, uh, surveying high school students. And we did see a decrease in drug use, but that, that was kind of to be expected, right? They right. weren't around their friends mm -hmm. so much. They were around their parents more. Um, but the significant thing that, that I noticed from it is a huge spike in the, the mental health needs, especially at that crisis level, acute level, where they're, they're really in trouble, went up 28%. And that wow. might be the largest increase we've ever seen. Oh, which is a huge number. So, I mean, it's such, a, it's such a scary thing, I think, for a lot of people to feel like I'm having an issue, right? Some people still don't want to talk about it. We all feel like we need to be stronger than it, but it's so common. And so we do need to rally around everybody, right? Like put your arms around others, be kind, Absolutely. help them. Um, you know, but what else can we do to really help these struggling teens? Well, I think as a parent, um, I think open communication is always what I, I, I think I, need, I say first. Talk with your kids, yeah. be open, and, and do that without creating shame. And that's a hard thing, like as parents, we don't think we're doing that, but sometimes our reaction, mm -hmm. if, if, if your child comes and tells you, hey, I, I tried some alcohol at a party, um, you should be grateful for that. Not grateful it happened, but grateful they're talking with you. And True. they don't need help feeling bad about it. They need help feeling better about it and to avoid that shame. Because I, I think that intensity of shame can be so hard for kids to deal with when they feel like not just I made a bad choice, but I am bad because of my choice. And, and uh, that, that can spiral pretty quickly with kids. Well, and how do you talk to the parents for a second? You know, if they're thinking, how do I be a parent, but also kind of sort of a friend so that my kids do want to come and tell me if they've done something wrong and I can help without them feeling, you know, like I'm, they're going to get in too much trouble. Yeah. You know, how do you, how, where does that yeah, balance? And I, I think you're, it's a tough balance, right? But I think your goal is not to be a friend, but to be an ally, mm -hmm. right? Okay, for them to word. see you mm -hmm. as, as, you know, mom, dad are an ally in helping me navigate what's a difficult time. That's good, right? I like like, it. The, like to be a mentor and a guide, that's really your role, but to, to be an ally, not part of the problem, not part of creating more shame or making them feel worse about, about what's happened, but, but guide them and direct them. And there's also signs that we need to watch out for if we're noticing these in kids. Uh, these can be, you know, things that could let us know something's wrong. Yeah, I think, I think, first of all, I think as a parent, you get a sense about things, right? You know when something's off with your right. child, and that's first and foremost is to look at that. But if, if you're seeing a change in their friends, a change in their mood or their sleeping habits, they're isolating from the family, they're losing interest in things that, that used to be important to them, um, those are things that definitely be concerned about and be talking with them about and asking what's going on. And if you're not making progress, then, then look for help. And it's also right. something that, you know, parents need to ask, are you doing okay? You know, yeah. how was school? And I'm, I'm sure, you know, there's so many times kids just want to go, oh, I don't want to talk about it, mom or dad, you know. They just, they don't want to deal with it. But in reality, letting them know that you are there and reaching out probably is a huge factor. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and trying to do that in a non-threatening environment and making mm -hmm. a habit of talking with your kids yeah. is ideal to just have times where it's like, let's go through your day. Don't just say, how was your day? Good. But tell me about your day. Tell me yeah. about this class. Tell me about this class. What, what are your friends doing? That's often a, a, a glimpse into what your child's really doing is to say, mm -hmm. hey, what are your friends up to? Um, you know, do you know, do you, any of your friends, uh, have a, they experimented with drugs and that, and how do you feel about that? Can really kind of start the conversation sometimes to help them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if anyone is struggling out there, whether it's a teen, a parent wondering what to do, they can reach out to you guys for more info, right? Absolutely. Uh, give us a call and we'll help. If our services aren't the best, we'll help you find something that is. But we have a lot of different options to help teens and, and to work with your whole family in therapy. Perfect. Shane, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. We'll be back after this.